Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are joining us from. I am just letting the last few folks in from the waiting room. We're excited to have you here today. Thank you for taking the time to talk a little bit about studying abroad as a Brandeis student. Looks like everybody's here. Um, I'm gonna mute everyone. Uh, at the start of this presentation, but certainly as we go along, if there are questions that I can answer, um, please feel free to unmute yourself or pop them in the Q&A. Um, I am happy to answer questions as we go along. Um, I am also happy to take time for questions at the end of the presentation. My name is Ari Kramer. I am one of the assistant directors of study abroad here at Brandeis. It's our pleasure to work with Brandeis students, Brandeis parents and family members and the Brandeis community to offer study abroad opportunities for our students in so many diverse nations, academic disciplines and regions around the world. Over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, we're gonna talk about the nuts and bolts, the basics of what you need to know about studying abroad as a Brandeis student. Um, we'll go over academics, we'll go over finances, we'll go over the application process, and certainly I'm happy to take the time to answer any questions um, from students, from families um, who are interested in study abroad opportunities. The Brandeis Office of Study Abroad is in the USDAN Student Center. We're up on the second floor. Um, we're a professional staff of four, like I Ari, um, but we are led by our director, Alicia Cardwell. Um, Ash is the other assistant director. Many of you may have heard of them as a part of your study abroad application process. And Erica is our senior department coordinator. We're open nine to five um, during uh, business days. Um, we are here right now, um, but we are certainly excited for everybody to make it back to campus next week and for the office to be bustling and busier again. Um, also have a team of study abroad ambassadors. These are mostly seniors, um, returned study abroad students who have studied abroad in locations all across the world um, who represent a variety of majors and minors, identities, um, experiential learning opportunities, and would be happy to talk to you about their study abroad experience, how they decided to go, where they went, what the experience was like, um, and why they uh, work in our office to to share their experience now after having returned from study abroad. We're really excited to see so many families here today. Um, we love to engage with Brandeis parents, families, siblings, whoever it might be. Um, as a part of a student study abroad journey, um, this is actually a video about supporting your Brandeis student. Um, it's about three minutes long. I'm not gonna make everybody watch it now, but I will pop the link in the chat if you'd like to, to watch it after we talk um, with some voices from past Brandeis fam family members of past Brandeis study abroad students um, and, and their experience working with their student who was studying abroad. The Office of Study Abroad exists to help all Brandeis students access study abroad opportunities, um, no matter their background, no matter, no matter their financial circumstances, no matter their identity, their academic interests. We have study abroad opportunities for students all across the world, um, for students from every background. We believe and actively promote the notion that a student's identity, a student's financial background, um, or their academic discipline should not be a barrier to an educational experience abroad. And I will tell you, having worked with hundreds, if not thousands of Brandeis students my time here, that we have had Brandeis students from every major and minor study abroad. And uh, we really embrace the opportunity to do so um, because everybody should be able to study abroad if that's what you wanna do as a part of your time at Brandeis. So the first question that we often get is what is study abroad? Why should I do this? What does it even mean? Um, and at Brandeis, it's relatively straightforward. Study abroad is the opportunity to earn academic credit toward a student's degree for a semester abroad, a year, or summer. I say abroad, but I actually mean off campus. Um, there are a number of study abroad programs that are available for Brandeis students, which are called study abroad, um, but do actually take place within the United States, including our newest Brandeis run summer program um, run by a faculty member who this summer will be taking a group of students to San Juan, Puerto Rico. 
There are a number of reasons to think about studying abroad. Um, as a study abroad student, you will gain exposure to cultures, to languages that are different than your own. Um, when you study abroad, you have the opportunity to take courses at universities and in programs all around the world that you simply wouldn't be able to take at Brandeis. And it can complement and expand upon your academic studies at Brandeis. Um, you know, some of the really cool courses that we've seen students take over the years include Maori studies, um, include all kinds of different um, non engineers that students will take as a part of their time abroad. There are significant career benefits to study abroad. Um, a majority of employers who are looking at candidates for jobs post-graduation look at a student's international experience, um, whether they studied abroad or did an internship abroad or something like that. If you think about it, when you're applying for a job, um, you're basically asking someone to take a chance on you being able to adapt and learn and succeed in an unfamiliar environment. And that is, by definition, what studying abroad is. And who sees that you've had a successful study abroad experience um, can also have a lot of faith that you'll be able to adapt and succeed in a new workplace environment. And of course, there's personal growth, um, whether you're interested in travel, whether you're interested in exploring your own identity. Um, there are all kinds of ways that students grow both as individuals and also as students over the course of their study abroad semester or summer. At Brandon an approved programs list of study abroad programs for students who are interested in going. Um, everywhere you see the little owl um, is a country where there is an approved study abroad program. We have more than 150 programs in 56 different countries all around the world uh, on all seven continents. Um, so it did get cut off the map, which is unfortunate, um, but I can say all seven continents. We have one program uh, down at the bottom of the map in Ushuaia, Argentina. Um, which has an excursion. Um, the students go to Antarctica as part of the program. Um, you do need to be fluent in Spanish for the program. Um, it's an environmental studies program, and we would be happy to talk to you about the opportunity to go to Antarctica or any of these other uh, 56 countries where students have and do study abroad as Brandeis students. When we're looking at programs that can be approved for Brandeis students to um, study abroad, um, programs are vetted and assessed by Brandeis for a number of things. Um, first and foremost, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, um, is health and safety support, the health and safety of Brandeis students, community members going abroad is our top priority. Uh, programs are assessed for on-site support. They're assessed for um, health and safety information from the U.S. State Department um, and other resources. Um, we're also looking at uh, the academic quality of the programs. The idea behind study abroad is that you are going to go somewhere and do a semester or a summer where you're going to get credit at Brandeis. You're going to make progress creation in the same way that you would um, for a semester or a summer at Brandeis. And so it's important for you uh, to be taking classes that are up to Brandeis' standards. And we're happy to talk through that as well. Um, there are a bunch of different ways to do study abroad, to run a study abroad program. And that's kind of what we get into when we talk about these program types, right? If you know people who have studied abroad, you've probably talked to them about their experiences and heard what their day-to-day -day life was like. Um, and it is important to think about study abroad as a life experience and not just an academic one. If you're going somewhere for a semester, you're gonna be there for four or five months. It is not only where you're taking classes, of course, study is the first word in study abroad and, and our top priority when it comes to academics abroad, but you'll also be living there, you'll be eating there. If you get sick, you'll be going to the doctor there. Um, and so there are different ways to structure a study abroad program um, that will appeal to different students. Um, so for example, we have what we call direct enrollment type programs. Um, these are programs where you are essentially enrolling at a local university. You might be going to the National University of Singapore. You might be going to the University of Bristol in the UK. Um, but you are going to be sitting in the classroom alongside local students. You are going to be taking classes with them. Um, you are going to be probably joining their student clubs and organizations and taking advantage of all the resources that a local university has to offer. Um, that stands in contrast to a program that we would call a study center program, where students are attending a standalone study abroad program designed for you. 
um, and a group of typically other US-based college students who are studying at least intentionally, um, taking courses together um, and often living together or living with local families or some variation on that. Um, these types of programs typically have an increased level of student support, right? It's a staff and faculty who are dedicated just to you as opposed to, for example, going to the University of Bristol and um, relying on the same international students office that all other international students rely on. Um, typically, study center programs will also have more flexibility, right? So if you're not tied to a university calendar, um, you will have probably more opportunities to go on field trips like study tours, excursions um, with the other students on the program. Um, and we're happy to dive deeper into these as you think about what might be the right opportunity for you. Um, there are programs internship built into them. Um, and these are programs where an internship is guaranteed. Um, it's typically incorporated into your academic course load. Um, so you will be placed with an organization in your field of interest uh, that welcomes study abroad students to intern, to work with them, to gain that professional experience while also gaining academic credit for it. It's kind of a two birds, one stone situation. Um, and we recommend it to a lot of students who are looking to build their resume, build their professional experience while also continuing to make progress towards graduation. Um, and the last program type that you'll see in our program discovery page when you go to our website is a field study program. These are usually based around a particular discipline, um, environmental studies, um, sometimes health policy, things like that, um, that are based out in the field. Um, one of the questions that came into the Q&A is about um, approving a program that's not already approved by Brandeis. Um, I would encourage um, the person who submitted that question to reach out to your advisor in the office, um, and we can answer there as a process for proposing a new program. It's rarely, um, and typically, um, it is in the case of a program that offers something academically that isn't already offered by one of the 150 programs on the list, but definitely reach out to your advisor about the process for proposing a new program um, to the undergraduate curriculum committee. So a couple things about eligibility for study abroad. Um, and to start off, I'm gonna talk about if you're going abroad for a semester or if you're going abroad for the full academic year. Um, Students are eligible to study abroad during the semester of the academic year um, if they have a 3.0 GPA. Um, they need to be in good academic standing, good conduct standing at Brandeis. Um, at Brandeis, students are eligible to study abroad during semesters five, six, and seven, um, if you think about an eight semester college degree. So that would be junior year or fall of your senior year. Um, you have to have made it to junior standing um, in order to be eligible to study abroad. Um, there are many programs that have prerequisites when it comes to uh, foreign language. Um, so if you're planning to go on a program in a country that speaks, and we like to say fish, so French, Italian, Spanish, or Hebrew, you will need to take at least two semesters or the equivalent of that language prior to studying abroad. Some programs will have requirements higher than that. Um, so like I was saying about the program that's in Ushuaia in Argentina. Um, this is a program where the courses are all conducted in Spanish, and so two semesters isn't enough in order to be successful in the program, but we'll be happy to go over that with you as we look through program options, um, and that would be in terms of meeting any program requirements. There are some program require programs that have requirements greater than this, you know, more language background, higher GPA, that kind of thing. When students study abroad for a semester, like I was saying before, um, they will earn credit, they will continue progress towards graduation. Generally speaking, um, on a semester study abroad program, all students will receive 16 credits. That's the equivalent of a typical semester at Brandeis. Um, sometimes this will look different in different places. You know, you might not be taking four classes. It might be three classes or five classes. Your advisor will work with you to essentially convert what the equivalent of 16 credits is because it's important to us that you remain on track to graduate um, and make the progress towards your degree that you're looking to make. You can use the courses abroad to fulfill requirements. Many students will go abroad and use um, elective courses to fulfill core requirements or major minor requirements. Um, major minor requirements are decided by the academic department. So for example, if you're a business major 
and you're interested in taking a class that would fulfill one of your business major requirements, you would be meeting with the study abroad liaison in business, it's Professor Vicente, um, to review the courses that you're proposing and make sure that you all are on the same page about how courses abroad are going to be able to count towards your major or towards your minor. A few things, and I know I'm moving through this quickly, but of course, I'm happy to stick around afterward to answer questions as well. A few things to know about finances as it relates to studying abroad during the semester or during the academic year. Um, when students study abroad, they remain Brandeis students. And so you will continue to pay Brandeis tuition and the undergraduate student fee while you're studying abroad. Um, nearly all, and it really is nearly all, there are very few si situations where this isn't the case, financial aid and grants apply to your semester um, or your study abroad year. The way that this breaks down is pretty simple. For the semester that you're studying abroad, you're going to receive two bills. You'll receive one from Brandeis for your standard Brandeis tuition and undergraduate student fee. Your financial aid, if you receive it, um, will continue to be deducted from that bill from Brandeis. The Brandeis bill will not include non-tuition expenses. So for example, housing, meal plan, some of these other things that are typical for a semester of Brandeis, that's because you pay those direct to your study abroad program. Um, so non-tuition costs will be a second bill from your study abroad program. Um, and you will pay your program. It's usually housing. Sometimes there will be a situation where the program has a meal plan or there's a required insurance charge, things like that. Um, but you don't pay double tuition and you don't pay double housing. The goal here is to keep the cost of the semester about what you expect it to be, give or take additional expenses, um, which are going to factor in when you're thinking about studying abroad, right? So getting to where you're studying abroad, the flight is probably gonna be more expensive than what you're typically used to for coming to Brandeis. Um, if you're gonna be cooking for yourself more or eating out more, if you're gonna need to get a passport or if you're gonna need to apply for a visa, there will be additional expenses and we will work with you and your advisor in student financial services to put together a comprehensive budget that includes all of these various details, gives you an estimate on what a semester is gonna cost and allows us to talk about what scholarship then. There are so many scholarships for study abroad um, through national organizations. You may have heard of the Gilman Scholarship, the Fund for Education Abroad, uh, other organizations that provide funding for students to study abroad. There's also a sizable endowed study abroad scholarship fund at Brandeis, which is only for Brandeis students, um, that everybody who receives need-based financial aid is eligible to apply for as part of the study abroad application process. Um, we really want study abroad to be something that's accessible and affordable for everyone, regardless of the financial situation. Um, and so if you um, are in a situation where you think you might be interested in study abroad, but you're not sure that it's going to be affordable, at least come talk to us. Um, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the programs and um, talk through the details of what it might be. Um, and I'll just add in here, there's one answer that came in through the Q&A asking about uh, one question that came in, uh, will Brandeis academic scholarships transfer to study abroad costs? And the answer is yes. Shifting gears for a second to studying abroad over the summer. Um, summer study abroad programs are also an excellent opportunity to jump ahead academically. Many students will earn credit over the summer by studying on a study abroad program. There's about 50 or 60 study abroad programs all around the world um, for students to go on during the summer. Typically, summer study abroad programs are going to earn you eight credits. Um, sometimes they're four, but most of them are eight. Um, so it's like the equivalent of half a semester of credit. Um, and the credits can work the same way. You know, you can use them to fulfill major minor requirements, core requirements, et cetera. Um, a lot of times people are looking for things to do over the summer. Um, and it's a really valuable way to gain experience, um, to do research under the supervision of a faculty member who has more time over the summer. And now you've got this faculty connection in, you know, Ghana or the UK or wherever it might be. Um, you can get an internship like the semester programs. Um, so it's definitely something that we encourage. Um, I was saying before that students are eligible to study abroad at Brandeis during the semester starting their junior year. And that's true. You have to be a junior in order to study abroad during the semester, but anybody is eligible to study abroad on a summer program anytime after their first year. 
Um, and so, for example, we will have lots of students who study abroad during the summer before sophomore year and then come back to us junior or fall of senior year and say that they want to study abroad again, which is awesome. Our summer study abroad programs are divided into two different categories. Um, we have four Brandeis run programs. These are programs designed by Brandeis faculty for Brandeis students. They're groups of Brandeis students who go and study in a particular location during the summer, typically based around an academic discipline. Um, so Brandeis in Copenhagen is a program that is uh, focused on business and economics. It takes place in Denmark. Um, Brandeis in Merida is a public health program that takes place in the Yucatan Peninsula um, in Mexico with a, an excursion to Havana in Cuba. Uh, Brandeis in Siena is an art history and painting program that takes place in Siena, Italy. And then this summer we'll be launching our uh, newest Brandeis run program in collaboration with the Environmental Studies Department, Brandeis in Puerto Rico, which is a program on environmental studies in the Caribbean. Uh, Professor Sally Warner will be running the program, um, going to Puerto Rico, teaching one of the courses. Um, and that I think is one of the things that set our Brandeis run programs apart is the fact that you go and study and travel with a Brandeis faculty member and other Brandeis. You know, there's many programs all around the world there that are going to be options um, for students who are looking to study abroad. But in these situations, going with a group of, you know, it's typically 10 or 15 other Brandeis students um, studying in a different place, living in a different place, taking Brandeis courses um, that are essentially equivalent credit wise to taking summer courses at Brandeis, um, except that you're doing them in Mexico or Puerto Rico or Denmark or Italy. Um, the programs in Puerto Rico and Mexico run the first half of the summer, Denmark and Italy run the second half of the summer. Um, and we're very excited about our newest program in Puerto Rico. Um, like I was saying, it's a, an eight credit program where students will take oceanography as well as environmental dimensions of sustainable development in Puerto Rico. Um, this, I think, highlights one of the unique things that Brandeis always likes to do with our Brandeis run programs um, is to make sure that we're incorporating um, the local community, local faculty into everything that we do with these programs. Um, and so the, the program, like I was saying, is led by Professor Sally Warner. Um, she's a physicist um, and she's teaching oceanography, uh, but we also hire Professor Carlos Munoz um, at the University of the Sacred Heart, Sagrado Corazon. Um, in Puerto Rico, who will be teaching environmental dimensions of sustainability in Puerto Rico. But you might not be a student who's interested in one of these four disciplines, um, and that's okay. For that purpose, there are many other approved summer programs that students can go on um, and get typically four or eight credits. Um, they will take place in a variety of different time frames over the course of the summer, um, and you can receive credit transfer it back to Brandeis, and it can help you get ahead in a major, a minor, et cetera. Um, this is Salma. She was in uh, Accra a couple of summers ago um, and had a wonderful time on the SIT program there. Um, for summer programs, uh, students aren't paying Brandeis tuition. They're not um, receiving Brandeis financial aid because it's the summer. Um, and so you will pay your program charges directly to the program. And we're happy to talk to students or families about what the finances mean for summer study abroad. For most programs, most students are gonna have two applications to complete. Um, first, you're gonna do your Brandeis application. This is your application to Brandeis to study abroad. It's not super extensive. You're gonna have a couple of short answer questions um, to talk about why you wanna study abroad, what research you've done into the location you wanna study abroad, that kind of thing. Um, you'll have a bunch of other forms to fill out as well as a course proposal. Um, this is essentially a, a spreadsheet where you're going to propose the courses you want them to take and how you want them to count. And you'll be reviewing that with the faculty in your department to make sure that everybody's on the same page um, about how uh, courses are gonna count. You will also need to apply and be accepted to your program um, because they're ultimately the ones who are accepting you and taking you on their program. Um, these timelines are gonna vary depending on the program and in your advising session with your advisor, you will be happy to, to talk through this process with you. The Brandeis application deadline for all study abroad programs in summer of 2024, fall of 2024, or spring of 2025 is March 1st. Brandeis has one deadline for the entire upcoming year. So if you or your student is interested in a study abroad program this summer 
or any time next academic year, they should be coming and meeting with the study abroad office now. Um, we're holding meetings over Zoom this week um, and obviously back in person uh, on campus next week uh, once, once folks are back. Um, we meet with all students who are interested in studying. We talk through these details. We help look through programs. It's an important part of the process. Um, and we're excited to meet with students who are interested in study abroad programs for next year. There's a great deal of resources and support that are available to study abroad students, prospective study abroad students. Um, I'm not gonna read through all of them, but some of the ones that I have highlighted previously, um, advising appointments with your advisor in the office. Everybody is gonna meet with your advisor at least once, but most will meet many times, um, as well as our study abroad ambassadors. Um, the Office of Study Abroad holds many events across campus in collaboration with other offices, academic departments, et cetera, throughout the, the academic year. Um, our big event in September is the annual uh, Brandeis Abroad Day, um, which I'm sure many people went to, our study abroad fair. But we'll also have a number of events coming up this semester, including out of Study Abroad Week um, and the Study Abroad Extravaganza. Um, details about those events will be sent out um, as they come up in early February. Um, we provide continual support to Brandeis students who are interested in study abroad, but also while they are studying abroad, um, if there are questions that folks have, if there are health and safety issues that come up, et cetera. Um, and we have conversations and provide resources for students who um, have various identities and want to think about the way that their identity may manifest, may impact their time abroad. Um, we have a running Google Doc of about 70 pages at this point of, of identity-based resources for all of the locations um, that Brandeis students study abroad. Um, you know, what is it like to study abroad as a student who is vegan and wants to go to New Zealand, that kind of thing. Um, and we're happy to share that. We do share it with everybody who's going abroad and we're happy to share it with anybody else who's curious as well. As I was saying, um, health and safety, of Brandeis students, Brandeis community members abroad is our top priority. Um, in our office, we will hold pre-departure workshops with students, students who are about to leave, um, as well as re-entry orientation for students who are returning from study abroad to talk through some of that adjustment, some of those transition challenges that can often come up. Um, we work with our partners abroad on programs on 24-7 support um, including, you know, on-site support if there are health issues that come up, insurance questions, things like that, orientation. Um, and our office is always monitoring global activity and reaching out to students who need support, um, depending on what might be happening all around the world. We maintain a family portal on our website. Um, the QR code should take you there. Um, you can also just find it from the menu bar on our website. Um, it's a really useful way um, to think more about how families can be involved um, in a student study abroad experience, both in terms of a student study abroad research into study abroad, um, but also um, the actual experience. This is Amanda who lived with a local roommate when she was in Beijing a few years ago. Um, this will also provide um, timelines. You know, how can I help my student be thinking about what they need to be thinking about right now in order to make sure they meet deadlines, things like that. Um, definitely students rely heavily on friends and family um, when they're thinking about making such a big decision as study abroad and your support is invaluable um, if you're the family of a, a or friend of a Brandeis student. Um, so next steps, how to help your student plan for study abroad. Um, this is that timeline that you'll also find on the family portal, so you don't need to take a screenshot. Um, but some of the things that we always like to highlight, ask your student if they might be interested in studying abroad, talk about it as a family, um, look at some of the programs together. Um, during a student's second year is the time that they should absolutely be meeting with the study abroad staff, starting to narrow down program options and applying. Um, the application deadline, like I said, is March 1st. Um, and families are also welcome to be involved in any parts of the conversation, as long as the student is comfortable, um, with regard to logistics abroad, finances abroad, things like that. And with that, I see a number of questions in the Q&A, and, and I'm happy to um, poke through them and answer them live. Um, if anybody has any questions that you'd like to pop in the Q&A, please feel free to post them. 
Um, like I was saying, this was a quick snapshot of what it's like to consider study abroad as a Brandeis student. And there's a lot more information that you can find on our website um, or that you can find on social media or just by reaching out to us. Um, abroad at Brandeis Study DU is our email. That'll get to us. Um, or you're also always welcome to call the office or uh, just stop by if you happen to be on campus. Um, it's a busy time of year for us. Like I said, the application deadline is March 1st, so we're excited. We love meeting with Brandeis students who want to take their Brandeis education abroad, apply their education in new um, and unique environments and, and scenarios. Um, and we're really excited to work with students to research those opportunities. Um, so I'll start answering questions in the Q&A. Um, but before I do that, if, if anybody has to go, certainly feel free. Um, and thank you all for being here. Um, the first question that I see is, what are the pros and cons of a full year abroad versus a semester? Um, which is a really good question. Um, sometimes this can go into an academic planning question. Um, you know, what are you thinking about in terms of your overall goals for Brandeis? Um, are you interested specifically in, you know, a double major? Are you interested in getting involved with organizations on campus? Like, what's your holistic Brandeis experience going to look like? Um, but at the same time, there is no better way to immerse yourself in a new country and a new language um, than to spend your whole junior year there. We have plenty of students who study abroad for a full year. Um, we have a limited number of students who study abroad, um, actually do two programs in the same year, one in the fall, one in the spring, um, which is a little bit more logistically challenging. Um, but if you or your student is interested in um, language immersion, um, if they're interested in, you know, immersion just into a, another country overall, the more time you're there, the more time you're going to be immersed. So definitely we recommend that students think about a full year. I'll also say there are a few programs that only offer a full year option. Um, so sometimes that can also be something to consider and to talk about with your advisor. So for example, um, at the London School of Economics, um, their academic courses actually last a full year. And so the only way to go there is if you're going for the full year. Um, question about acceptance rate for study abroad. Um, how many programs do we recommend applying to? Um, so it's a good question. Um, generally speaking, um, so you are applying to Brandeis for approval to study abroad. Um, students who are eligible to study abroad typically do not have an issue in this regard. I mean, we'll be working with you throughout the process. So like, if somebody was going to have an academic eligibility issue or anything regarding approval to study abroad, it would have come up. It shouldn't be a surprise. Um, in terms of how many programs we recommend applying to, it's a good question. So there are a limited number of programs that are super competitive to get into. Um, University of Oxford in England, um, Waseda University in Tokyo. Some of these programs that just have fewer spots available than students who are interested in them. And we'll always be open with students who we're meeting with about the fact that they're applying to a competitive program and recommend that they have an alternate program. Um, students can apply for up to two. Um, so generally speaking, a lot of students will either just apply to one or they'll have a primary and an alternate program. That's how the application process works. And for most programs, most Brandeis students um, are not going to have an issue with regard to admission. Obviously, I can never make, you know, a fully blanket statement. There are situations where crazy things happen. Um, but generally speaking, most students um, will not, most students will be excellent candidates for most of the study abroad programs that we're working with. And those who might have a little bit more of a competitive application, they're going to know about it. Um, and so this is just something that we'll be open with students about through the application process and encourage them to talk about as well. Um, there are a couple of questions about um, health insurance abroad, uh, getting a visa for study abroad. Um, so two things about health insurance. Um, so first of all, as it relates to US-based health insurance, um, when you're studying abroad as a Brandeis student, you remain a Brandeis student. Um, and so you are still required by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to have health insurance that works in the US. Um, so if you have US-based health insurance, stay on it. Um, if you get your health insurance through Brandeis, like the, the Brandeis Student Health Insurance Plan, um, you'll continue to be enrolled in it for the time that you're abroad. Um, this is in case of emergency, um, and it's also to comply with Massachusetts state law. 
Um, in a lot of cases, US-based health insurance is not actually going to provide a whole lot of coverage abroad. Um, it might be really limited. It also might be really difficult um, to get reimbursed for things, or you might have to pay a lot out of pocket. Um, so all students are going to have some type of health insurance while studying abroad. In many cases, this is going to be provided by your program. Um, so you will be going on a program in, say, Madrid, um, where IES is the organization that runs the program, and they're going to have a health insurance policy that you get enrolled in. Um, there are also situations where programs simply don't provide health insurance to students. It's up to students to figure it out. And in those situations, Brandeis has a health insurance plan, an international health insurance plan with a company called SI um, that we will enroll you in. Um, you'll pay um, an additional, it's typically about $40 a month on your Brandeis bill, and it'll cover you internationally. And I should say about the CISI plan, it's a plan that is available to um, everybody, even if your program also provides health insurance. Uh, and we talk to folks about this. I like to say that um, one of the um, areas where people um, often opt into CISI, even if their program also has health insurance offered, is that CISI tends to be much better in terms of offerings for mental health support abroad, um, therapy abroad, um, access to telehealth, um, things like that. And so everybody's available, everybody's eligible to opt into it, and we're happy to talk about the details with any particular student. Um, there's a question about um, mid-year students who studied abroad during the semester before you arrived at Brandeis. Um, the question is, can a mid-year who went on the program in London or Florence um, go and study abroad again in the summer or for the semester? Um, the short answer is yes. Um, we're happy to look at specific um, circumstances regarding transfer credit and if there are going to be any limits on programs. Um, but everybody at Brandeis is eligible to receive um, 16 transfer credits towards your graduation, plus um, an additional semester of study abroad. Um, like I said, the Brandeis run programs are all Brandeis courses, so there's no transfer credit issue with that. Um, and many, many mid-years, as you would imagine, who studied abroad um, before arriving at Brandeis are also interested in studying abroad while they're here. Um, Somebody's asking about housing um, for study abroad, right? So if you're only studying abroad for one semester, what does housing look like for the other semester? You'll be applying for housing the same way um, that you typically do at Brandeis. Um, there's a special study abroad housing um, process that happens as a part of housing selection. Um, basically, you do it on a different day and the circumstances are slightly different and the, like the, the portal looks a little different for you because you're only looking for one semester instead of the full year. Um, but I would direct all questions about housing to DCL um, because they're the ones who can tell you the specifics of what housing looks like um, and you know what the circumstances are gonna be like if you later decided not to study abroad and that kind of thing. Um, there's a question about, um, so I'll just read it. Uh, Given the current political situation in the world, does Brandeis assess the safety of sending Jewish students to other countries? If so, where can we find the info on which countries are friendly to Jewish students and which are not? It's a really important question. Um, obviously, we work with a lot of students who are Jewish. Um, the, the first thing that I'll say is that we are always assessing the health and safety of locations where Brandeis students are studying abroad, um, making changes to the approved programs list if it's necessary. Um, and making sure that students have access to emergency contact information, safety information um, that they will need in the country that they're going to. Um, in terms of connections to Jewish community resources, um, I, I would just say I would encourage, if, if you or if your student is worried about this, I would encourage you to reach out to me or any of the other advisors in the office. Um, we're happy to talk about details. Um, depending on a student's individual circumstances, um, we will put them in touch with um, community-based resources. There's an organization called Kahal um, that uh, essentially connects Jewish students abroad with Jewish communities abroad. You know, if you're going to London and you want to be invited to a Shabbat dinner, that kind of thing, um, Kahal is a really great resource. Um, 
and we are also happy to provide connections to other resources um, depending on on what the specific circumstances. Uh, there's a question about um, doing an eight credit summer study abroad and then being a half time student during your last semester of senior year. Um, it's a really good question. Um, I would encourage you, if you're the person who asked this question, to reach out to your academic advisor um, to learn more about uh, senior reduced status, um, which is essentially what you're asking, um, as well as debt and eligibility for it. Um, it is an option that can be available to Brandeis students. There are some graduation requirements in terms of the number of full semesters you have to spend at Brandeis, that kind of thing. Um, so definitely ask about that. Um, but it's a good suggestion and we're happy to work with you on the details. Um, another question about housing um, for study abroad. Um, if you're studying abroad for the spring semester, do you move out of the residence hall after the fall semester is over? Um, and what does the cost look like? Um, so the answer is yes. Yeah, so if you're studying abroad in the spring, you'll have Brandeis assigned housing for the fall semester only um, and you will uh, pay Brandeis housing for the fall semester only, because in the spring, um, you'll be living in a residence hall, apartment, homestay, et cetera, provided by your study abroad program and paying the cost of housing there um, to the program directly. Um, in terms of eligibility for study abroad programs uh, for students who aren't juniors yet, just to clarify, so um, Brandeis students are eligible to study abroad during the summer anytime after their first year. So that includes the Brandeis run programs. Um, and we do get a lot of rising sophomores who go on those. Um, but rising sophomores are also eligible to apply to any of the other affiliate summer programs, so long as those programs accept students who are rising sophomores. Like there's a few that for the program, you know, the Santa Ana is Institute for, in Italy, for example, they won't give you an internship unless you're a rising junior or senior. Um, so you'd want to make sure that there are um, that there are no requirements that are preventing you on that end, but on Brandeis's end, it works. Um, question about competitiveness of Brandeis and Siena. Um, Brandeis and Siena is an awesome program. It's run by Professor Wardwell, Joe Wardwell. Um, he's a painter this summer. Um, he teaches a painting course and then uh, Professor Roberto Fineschi is based in Siena. Um, he teaches an art history course. It's a, an intensive art program in Tuscany. Um, how likely is a student to get into the Brandeis and Siena program? Um, these questions are always tough because I don't know the student. Um, generally speaking, what I will say is this is a very specific program, right? It's focused on art history and painting. Um, if it's something that sounds interesting to you, um, then you're going to be put together a good application and be accepted to the program as long as you meet the eligibility requirements. Um, if you don't like painting, then you probably aren't going to get accepted, but you also probably shouldn't apply and we'll tell you that when we meet with you. Um, but generally speaking, um, these programs have rolling admissions. I would certainly encourage you to apply sooner rather than later in case it fills up, um, but it generally doesn't. Um, and it's a really good opportunity for students who are interested in painting and art history. Um, there is a list of summer programs on the website. I think I have too many windows open right now to um, send it to you or to pull up the link, but I'm putting my email in the chat and certainly anybody is welcome to send me an email with follow-up questions um, and I can send a link to the um, list of summer programs on our website. Are there any final questions that anybody has? As I was saying, we really appreciate you being here, taking the time um, to think about study abroad as an option. Um, we love working with Brandeis students who are interested in studying abroad. Um, we hope to see you or your student in our office soon. Um, and as I was saying, if there are any final questions, please feel free to follow up via email, either with me um, or the Office of Study Abroad, the, the email address that you see on your screen. Um, so happy new year. Have a good last few days of winter break. We're really excited to see you back in Waltham uh, in a couple of weeks. Thank you all.